So we're going to talk about resistance and temperature today and try and establish a relationship between them. Before we begin, let's do a quick recap though. Last time we defined what resistance is of a conductor and established the relationship between the resistance and the physical parameters of the conductor. So we said the resistance R is equal to the resistivity rho times the length L divided by the cross-sectional area A. So resistance and temperature. Now the first thing is, um, you might be asking is why is this even important? So why do you really need to study the relationship between resistance and temperature? And let me just give you a quick example why that might be important. Let's say you have been given a temperature, uh, uh, sorry, a resistance R1 at temperature T1. This is, let's say, given by a manufacturer, right? You're buying a conductor from a manufacturer. He gives you a resistance saying my conductor uh, is uh, uh, t uh, has a resistance of 10 ohms but I've tested it at my uh, facility at uh, 20 degrees C, right? So example, 10 ohms at 20 degrees C. But what happens when you go to install this? You have to install this out in the open, let's say, and you're installing it, for example, you know the ambient temperature can go up to 35 degrees C. So then you need a resistance R2 at that temperature, right? So you're given this and you're supposed to find R2 at 35 degrees. So that's a case where you might need to find out what the resistance is at a temperature that's different from what's, uh, what the conductor has been tested on or what the, what the, uh, uh, what information or data you've been provided with, right? Now let's try and establish what this relationship is. So let's let's take a conductor. Let's assume a cylindrical conductor. What's this conductor made of? It's got atoms in there, like all physical matter. So this has atoms in there. These atoms have free electrons, right? Because after all, what is electric current? It's the flow of these free, free electrons. Now what happens when the temperature rises? When my temperature rises, these atoms in there start vibrating, right? And once the atoms are vibrating, the free electrons start colliding with each other. If the free electrons are colliding with, with each other, there's less current flowing through this conductor because the electrons, the flow of these free electrons is electric current. Now there's less free electrons available to flow because they're busy colliding with each other. So if temperature rises means less, less free electrons, meaning less electric current flowing through. And what is our definition of resistance? It's the opposition to electric current. So if there's less electric current flowing through here, that means the resistance has increased. Okay, let me state that again. Less electric current flowing through the conductor means the resistance has increased. And the less electric current is flowing as a result of this temperature rise, which means when temperature rises, it implies that the resistance will rise as well. The good thing for us though is this temperature, uh, this resistance rising with this temperature rising is a linear relationship for all electric conductors. And I'll tell you and I'll show you how that is a good thing. So let, let me draw this relationship here. Let's draw this linear relationship. So let's say this is your temperature axis. This is your resistance axis. Let us consider a temperature T1. It has a resistance R1 here. Let us similarly consider another temperature T2, which has a resistance R2 here. Right? So this point and this point. And what we said, it's a linear relationship. 
what I mean by that is it's a straight line. If you draw a graph between temperature and resistance, it'll be a straight line. And when we extend this line, it's going to touch here on the temperature axis at a temperature, let's say, T. So you have this as T, this as T1, this as T2, this is your R1, and this is your R2. That is pretty straightforward. And why I've marked all of this up, I'll, I'll make that clear in a bit. Let me state that once again for you. And as a matter of fact, let me write that down. So resistance varies with with temperature linearly in all operating ranges. And what do I mean by operating ranges? So what we are doing is we are not considering things like absolute zero or 1000 degrees centigrade on the surface of the sun or where have you. We are considering places where you would install conductors. Um, so for example, you could talk about temperatures from minus 50 degrees centigrade to plus 50 degrees centigrade. So that's what we mean by operating range uh, under, let me add there, for all normal operating ranges, for all the um, all the conditions we'd be cons uh, concerned about when an analyzing our, our power system, um, for all those ranges, this relationship holds true. What is this T temperature here that I marked for you? So this T is the temperature constant. It is fixed for a material. So in that regard, it's similar to resistivity. So for example, the temperature constant of copper will be X, the temperature constant for aluminum would be Y, for example, and that will remain constant irrespective of what other conditions you may have. And that is basically this point where the resistance is zero. Right, so if you go along this temperature axis, at this point the resistance would be zero. So that's your temperature constant. That is something that would be given to you or that you can easily find for a material online or uh, uh, would be provided with the uh, manufacturer documents, for example. So now that we've, we've marked all of these down here and we've seen um, uh, we've been given, so let's see w w w uh, what parameters we know and what we need to find out. So we know this T um, as a constant. So we know T. We would know T1 and R1. These are our reference uh, resistance and temperature. We know T2 because that's what we, uh, we um, that's the temperature at which we want to find out our resistance. So these are given to us, or we know that and we're supposed to find out R2. So the relationship here is R2 over R1 is equal to T plus T2 over T plus T1. How do we get this relationship? I am going to show you right now. Let's go back to this graph here and let us consider two right angle triangles. So let's consider a triangle from here. This triangle here. This is one right angle triangle. And let us consider another right angle triangle. This one. And let us do a little trigonometry. Don't worry, it is very, very simple. So this is the big triangle, big right angle triangle. And let me mark things here. This is R2. Oops, sorry. That's R2. 
this whole distance here is t2 plus t, right? So let me mark that as well. So this is t plus t2. Let me come here and mark the smaller triangle as well. So you have the smaller triangle here where this is R1 and this is T plus T1. Let us consider this angle here, theta. What would be tan theta? Tan is opposite by adjacent, if I remember my trigonometry correctly. So in the small triangle, it would be R1 over T plus T1. And in the larger triangle, it would be R2 over T plus T2. And they're both tan theta, so these two are equal. And from this, we get R2 over R1 is equal to T plus T2 over T plus T1. So there you go, guys. That's the relationship between resistance and temperature. Again, you're given all the values except R2 here, so it should not be very difficult for you to find out what R2 is. Let's do a quick example to use this formula and that'll clarify this even more. So let's say, okay, let's make a quick example here and say our temperature T1 is given to us as 20 degrees centigrade. Uh, we are given it's a copper conductor, uh, we're told it's a kilometer long, it's uh, cross-sectional area is 100 millimeters square. We know that the rho of copper, the resistivity of copper is 1.77 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter and we're given the other constant, the temperature constant here as well. For, for copper it is 241 degree centigrade. So let's find R2. For that first, so if you look at this equation, you're given T, you know your T, T2 is, okay, so you're supposed to find, okay, I need to give you T2, right? So let's say T2 is 30 degree centigrade. So you're given T2, you're given T1, uh, you know the temperature constant, what you don't know is R1, but we know from our last class we can calculate R1. So R1 is equal to rho L over A, which means 1.77 times 10 to the power minus 8. Length is one kilometer, but it needs to be meters because that's the SI unit for length. Cross-sectional area is given 100 millimeters square, but again, that needs to be in meters square if you remember from our last video. So if I calculate this, I believe I'm going to get a value of 0.177 ohms. So that's my R1. My R2 then is simply going to be R1 times, let me write this a little bit properly, R1 times T plus T2 over T plus T1. So that will be 0.177 times 241 plus 30 over 241 plus 20. And I believe if you put those values in your calculator, you're gonna get a value of 1.837 ohms. So that is your R2. This is your R1. The one observation I want you to make is R2 is higher than R1 which is what we concluded when we were discussing uh, how temperature would impact our conductor, right? We said as the temperature rises, the resistance would rise. And that's what we see here mathematically happen as well. Uh, so just as a sanity check, make sure the value you get, if the temperature is higher, it should be, your resistance should be higher uh, as well. Anyways, as always, I will leave you with a sample problem. So there, if we saw it's pretty, pretty simple, uh, nothing very complicated. We just need to understand what, what physically happens and what that relationship is. Once we've built that, it should be relatively simple. So let me give you um, 
a quick example, uh, a quick uh, sample problem. So you're given a cylindrical copper conductor. The radius of this conductor is five millimeters and you're given the length is 10 kilometers. Let me write that properly for you so you don't get confused. The length is 10 kilometers and what else? So you find for me, um, find out R1 at 20 degrees centigrade and R2 at let's say 30 degrees centigrade. You should already know this, but I will mention this again. The resistivity is 1.77 ohm meter, 1.77 times 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meter, and the temperature constant for copper is 241 degrees C. This is a little bit different than what we've done so far, um, but um, I hope you should be able to solve it. It's, it's, it's not um, humongously difficult. Um, it's relatively straightforward. Um, but if you have problems, uh, feel free to ask them. If you'd like me uh, to go over your answers, put them in the comment section below. And uh, till next time, um, have fun and enjoy. We're going to talk about uh, something called skin effect uh, very soon. And we go we're going to get into uh, calculating inductance of a conductor and um, have loads of fun with that. All right, guys, take care and enjoy.